Welcome back to another video. I'm going to be doing a pound for pound list here for every men's champion in the UFC. I'm basically going to make these choices at least for S, A, B, and C, and D based on how their resumes are. So like how good their wins are, the the idea, the, the, the wins around them, like how good of an actual wind objectively is it, and then skill base. So for example, you'll find more balanced fighters towards the bottom of the weight classes. So not like bottom like of a weight class, but towards the bottom of the division. So like, I, I mean, in general, flyweight, bantamweight, featherweight, you'll see more of a more balanced group here in the champion, at least champion wise. A lot of these guys are balanced in general, but you'll see a more technical, skillful um, way here other than some of the heavier guys, because that's just how some of the divisions are at this point. So I'm going to multiply those together take the resume, take how much skill they have, put them together, and that's how I'm gonna make this list. So for the first person on this list, why don't we go with, we'll go with Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno, I wanna put him at, I don't think he, he's not gonna be S tier, he's not gonna be A tier. I think I'm gonna put him at B tier. The only reason why I say that is that if it say if he beats Pantoja, I think maybe he deserves to go to A tier, but let's be real, he hasn't successfully defended the title. He drew with Figueredo the first time. He won by submission the second time. Third time, he lost by decision to Figueredo. And the fourth time, I think it was what a, a doctor stoppage, a doctor's cut, or whatever it was that ended the fight. So none of the fights, like I feel like it, the, it, the belt's kind of flopping back and forth a little bit more. You can't really put them too high on this list. So that's why I have Brandon Moreno there at this point here he had, does have some good wins but and he does have a lot of skill but i just think the fact that the championship has flipped around quite a bit kind of does not help him in this case so for the next fighter i'm gonna put on here i'm gonna put john jones i'm gonna start at the top here i'm gonna put him in s tier i have two people in s tier on this list i'm gonna put him at s tier obviously he has a resume he has a skill i think it's pretty clear that he deserves to be number one here i think in before then maybe if you look towards the end of his light heavyweight run you can say like the Santos fight, the Gustafson fight, and the Reyes fight kind of would have put him down a little bit more because they weren't as clear wins. They're kind of split decision wins. I thought Reyes should have beaten him, but he made it pretty clear that he's, he's still that guy when he moved up to the heavyweight division and submitted Shogun with ease. So I'm putting him there. He has the resume. He has the skill. Showed that he moved to two different weight classes and got it done. So I'm going to put John Jones at number one for my second fighter here. I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put Leon Edwards in A tier. The reason why I say that, he does have some decent wins on his record. He, he's beaten RDA. Uh, Gunnar Nelson by split decision, I believe he won against. He beat uh, Kamar Usman twice. Obviously, the first one, he kind of just got that shot at the end. But in the second one, he pretty much beat him down pretty badly. Like people will say it's close. To the point deduction made it look close, a little, a little bit more close than it really was. I think he easily won that fight i thought it was pretty clear i think there's some people saying robert I don't, I don't know it was a pretty clear win there over the pound for pound number one fighter so i think that deserves to be in the a tier he's a very well balanced fighter as, as well on the feet and on the ground i think that's probably why he beat him, beat kamar usman as well as as good as he did so moving on for the next fighter i'm going to put i'm going to put islam makashev behind leon edwards and the reason why i do that i'm putting him at a tier is because he doesn't really have the resume he has a win over volkanovsky and has a win over charles Oliveira, which are two really good wins and probably some of the best wins you can get in general in the ufc but his resume before then i don't think was that good what he he fought armin saruki and when he debuted at like 22 23 years old and armin saruki and that's i guess aged pretty well armin surukin looks great i'm about to enter the top five of the division at least we hope so because he's definitely getting a lot better but that win aged pretty well and what he has a win over drew dober i mean he he fought bobby green on short notice fought not not islam going on short notice but those fighters coming in on short notice against bobby green and then dan hooker came on short notice to get him the title shot against charles Oliveira. looked great in that matchup and had a very close fight with Alexander Volkanovsky, which a lot of people thought he lost. So, or I, was, I will say about split and people who thought he lost. So, I'm going to put Islam Makashev right behind. I'm going to put him right behind Leon Edwards. I think Leon Edwards had a more decisive win over Kamar Usman. I think he's more balanced in his skill set. I think Islam Makashev uh, uses his wrestling to help his striking a little bit more. And I just think in plain skill, 
I think Leon Edwards is a little bit better on the feet in general. And I think he's 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 solid enough to where the eliteness of Islam Makashev's ground game won't kind of offset it in the skill range. So that's why I'm gonna put Islam Makashev right behind Leon Edwards. If he does beat what a Charles Oliveira, whoever his next matchup is, I think he deserves to go ahead of Leon Edwards, depending on when that Leon Edwards Colby Covington fight gets made. So that's my kind of thought process there. At this point, I'm going to put for this next one. I'm going to do Jamal Hill. I was kind of contemplating this one. C or B tier. I like Jamal Hill a lot. I think I think he's a really good fighter. Or at least from what we saw against Glover Teixeira. Kind of came out of nowhere with that. I thought he for sure was going to get... I thought he was going to lose in that matchup. Because what we saw against him with uh, Tiago Santos. I was like, man, Glover's going to do some bad things to him. But... He looked really good against Glover to share, defended all takedowns, looked good on the feet as well. But he looked really good in that fight. I was contemplating maybe putting him ahead of Brandon Moreno. I don't want to put him at C tier. So I feel like that's a little bit more disrespectful, but I do feel like we do need to see a little bit more of him. So, resume wise, doesn't have a crazy resume, has a win over Johnny Walker, and he's looking a little bit better now. And that, that's the only one kind of in the top five where it's kind of pointing out there. And then he has a win. What, Tiago Santos isn't in the UFC anymore. No, I think that was this, that last fight before he got the title shot. And but go, go over to share. So, I don't know. I kind of want to put him... If I am going to put him at B tier, it would probably be like right here. I feel like one more win, he probably gets ahead of Brandon Moreno, maybe. Because just depending on how that Pantoja and Moreno fight happens. But I think I'll put Jamal Hill there. If not, realistically, I'll, I'll put him at C. But I think B tier all the way back here probably the right decision for the next one we have Aljamain Sterling I think I'm going to put hmm I think I'm gonna put him behind Islam Makashev and honestly part of it is not even his fault I think the the issue with Aljamain Sterling's title defenses and his wins is that he won he the first fight when he got the title beat Piotr Jan by taking a knee on the ground which again not his fault but he it kind of just made him look really bad second fight Piotr Jan didn't have his team with him or his cornerman at all so he ended up winning that fight I believe by split decision so people kind of just not give him that win in general because of that and then fought TJ Dillashaw I believe his shoulder was he was fighting with one arm beat him there and finished him and then his recent fight most clean victory he's had with that title so against Henry Cejudo, but a lot of people say, oh, he's a 35-year-old coming back, took a bunch of years off, whatever. Uh, went to split decision, won that fight. So I think I'm going to put him after Islam Akashev. I think Islam probably has a little bit more clean stand-up and I think is a better wrestler than Aljamain Sterling. Just because he uses his mask. Maybe it's just he uses his mask. Maybe Aljamain's a better technical grappler, a technical grappler. Don't freak out, but like a, a more technical grappler. I think, but I think Islam is just better on the ground in general because he's able to use his mass, able to find some good submissions using the Sambo background, of course, that he has. And then I guess he does have, I don't want to say a better resume. See, that's the tricky part. I think they're on the, on the same level. I think I'm going to put them like, if I could, I could put them right on top of each other. But I think they're on the same level here. I think Aljamain, because, again, factors that aren't into his own, obviously, I guess you could say the knee, but... Other than that, factors that aren't in his own with his style of defenses, I can't really blame that on him too much. He did whatever he's he was told, made weight, um, fought the fights and won. So I think resume-wise, he's a really good win over Corey Sanhagen. But, I mean, a, a very clean win. Has some good wins, again, with his title defenses. But, again, you can't really hold him too strongly. I guess I'm going to put them on the same level. Because Islam Makashev doesn't have the greatest resume, has a win over Volkanovski, has a get, win over Charles Oliveira. That's why I think I'm going to put him a little bit ahead of Sterling. And I think if you're going striking wise, I do think Islam has a better stand up. Although Sterling's more of an output guy, he's more cleaner on the feet for sure. And I think on the ground, he's a little bit better. I think he forces himself on on the guys. Is a little bit too much for those guys. Um, does pretty well there, but I think I'm going to put them even. So. Nothing too crazy there. Next person I'm going to put on this list is Alexander Volkanovsky. He's at S tier for me. I think skill-wise, the best probably 
out of all these guys in the group i think the best on the on the feet i won't say i won't say like in sections that he's the best on the feet out of all these guys the best on the on the ground with all these guys because it's obviously not true but i think he's just so well-rounded he's a great fighter and he's great everywhere and I, I think in it elite on the feet as well i think he's better on the feet than any of these guys and i think on the ground i won't say he's better than everyone but he holds his own on the ground does really well on the ground most balanced fighter here i think if john jones didn't have the resume that he had already i think alexander volkanovsky 100 percent deserves the beat pound for pound number one especially after that islam fight i think islam had a really big advantage going into that fight and i think alexander volkanovsky kind of proved himself to be that guy in the ufc so i'm gonna put him at s here i feel like those are no-brainers there the thing that might get people a little angry here i'm gonna put israel adesanya at a at the top part of a tiers if, if i had a, a little level here between a and s i would put israel adesanya but i'm not gonna do that i think israel adesanya is elite on the on the feet kind of does well well he, he got out wrestled but that was up a division as well I think on the ground, he can kind of hold his own, I guess. He doesn't put himself in bad situations at middleweight. Went up to light heavyweight, got controlled on the ground by Jan Blachowicz. But I think, in general, the loss... If he didn't lose to Alex Pereira the first time at MMA, I think he would probably be at S tier at this point. But I think because he had the close fights before then, he had a close fight with uh, Romero, had the close fight with Whitaker in that second fight, which a lot of people thought Whitaker probably could have gotten the, the victory there had a decently close fight with jerry cannon here a lot of people don't really pay too much attention to that because it was a, a pretty boring fight a lot of people were actually leaving the stadium before the end of it but had a relatively close fight to, with jerry cannon here which is still a win though it wasn't like split decision but it's still a decently close fight three two win but i think losing to alex prayer after that and then getting the ko win here but alex prayer was starting to to do very well in that matchup i think i have to put him at a tier here if there was an area where I could put him in the middle here with S and A, I would probably put him there, but he's the top part of A tier here. So that's my pound for pound rankings. If I were to put, if I were to spread these out a little bit more, maybe I would go like Jamal Hill down here and maybe like Sterling. I don't know if I can put Sterling there. I think it would probably be like that if I were to spread it out a little bit more, but I think this is probably about right here. Um anything to add women's fighters if i were to do women's fighters Zhang would probably be a tier probably right here and then i'll probably put grasso at c but that's what i have for this one let me know what you guys think about my rankings and i'll see you guys next time